My previous video looked at thermal results for five different coolers rotated in four different orientations to figure out how a cooler should be rotated for optimal passive cooling in a tower case. What that video did not consider is whether or not these coolers would be better suited in a horizontal orientation, with the motherboard lying flat. That's what I've tested here, with four horizontal orientations up against the best vertical orientations for each cooler. The four horizontal orientations include the case lying flat with the cooler facing upward, with and without the side panel installed, and the case lying flat with the motherboard on the roof and the cooler facing downward, with and without the side panel. For the downward facing orientations, the case was held on the edges of two boxes to encourage passive airflow upward toward the coolers. The test system included a fractal design MeshFi C case with all dust filters removed, an ASUS ROG Strix Z490E motherboard, and a 10 core Intel i9-10900. The coolers tested here were the Arctic Alpine 12 Passive, no fan CR80EH, Fantex TC14PE, and Thermalrite Legrand Macho. I tried to choose a variety of cooler designs for these tests. I tested the CPU at three different power levels for each test so that I could estimate the maximum sustainable power level for each orientation. Each test included a half hour Prime 95 stress test. Core temperatures were recorded in hardware info and averaged during each minute. The room's ambient temperature was then subtracted from the core averages. The blue line is the case standing up vertically. The orange line is with the case lying flat and the cooler facing upward with the side panel installed. The gray line is the cooler facing up with the side panel removed. The yellow and green lines are the case flipped upside down, motherboard on the roof and cooler facing downward. Yellow is with the side panel on and green is with the side panel off. We can see here with the Arctic Alpine 12 that temperatures for the orientations with the cooler facing upward were very close to the temperatures with the standard vertical orientation. The two orientations with the cooler facing downward had significantly higher temperatures, however. Next up is the no fan CR80EH. This time the cooler facing upward with no side panel is the clear winner with the lowest temperatures. The cooler performed similarly in the standard vertical orientation and in the upward facing orientation with the side panel in place. And similarly to the Arctic cooler, the no fan cooler did the worst with the cooler facing downward. Now for the Fantex TC14PE. This cooler clearly performed best in its standard vertical orientation with the blue line. Curiously, the Fantex cooler did not do the worst when facing downward. The yellow and green lines lie between the upward facing configurations with and without the side panel. Finally, here are the results for the Thermalrite Legrand Macho. These results are the most dramatic. The standard vertical installation is far and away the best orientation with the Thermalrite cooler. Again, just like with the Fantex cooler, there wasn't a clear advantage for the cooler facing upward or downward. Here is the summary. There are a lot of numbers here, but I wanted to include all of the trend line formulas that were used to calculate these results. These figures are for the estimated power limit at which I calculate each configuration to hit the CPU throttling point of 100 degrees when fully stressed, assuming an ambient temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. If you study this chart, you will see that the results are very different for each cooler so I don't think I can make a blanket statement about vertical versus horizontal configurations. The only blanket conclusion that I can draw here is that all of the coolers performed worse when facing downward. This is a good thing considering that there aren't any cases that I've ever seen with the motherboard installed to the roof of the case. The Arctic cooler could handle about 48 watts in the vertical orientation. With the case lying flat and no side panel, the cooler could handle slightly more at 49 watts. It doesn't seem to strongly prefer a vertical or horizontal orientation. The no fan cooler clearly performed better when facing upward though. It could handle about 69 watts in the vertical case configuration, or between 72 and 79 watts in the horizontal orientation. It seems that this is the only cooler that strongly prefers the motherboard line flat. 
Both the Fantex and Thermalright coolers performed significantly better in the standard vertical case configuration, especially the Thermalright cooler. I am sure that this is because the cooling fins on these two coolers are parallel with the motherboard when installed. So the fins are only vertical when the motherboard is vertical. The conclusion here is that the best passive cooler for a particular system really will depend on the case's orientation. For most cases, the larger and more expensive Fantex and Thermalright coolers are the clear winners. But that completely changes when installed horizontally with the motherboard lying flat. The smaller and much lighter NoFan CR80EH is the clear winner for horizontal cases. Luckily for the budget-friendly Arctic Alpine 12 Passive, it performed similarly vertically or horizontally. If you found these results useful and want to access the raw data for these tests, head over to my Patreon page where I will make this data and future test data available for download by patrons. Thanks for watching and visit FullySilentPCs.com if you are interested in purchasing your own custom-built fanless PC. Like this video and subscribe for more fanless PC content.